Once upon a time, there was one man named Kenji Seto. He's a conspiracy nut job who kept on saying that feminists are gonna take over the world, chanting those lines in Yamako Academy in 2012, and continued to chant the conspiracies into the vast open world as he graduated. People kept on dismissing him as a conspiracy nut job and just an absolute lunatic in general, and honestly, you can't blame them. The feminists are of course not gonna take over the world, and Kenji is legally blind. He's not in any forms of way credible for this entire discussion. Cut into 2014-2016, where actual feminists have taken over the world. They went into the comic book industry, completely ruining Marvel to the point where most of their comics fall down to the bottom 50 of the September chart. They went into video games, throwing massive temper tantrums on Tumblr to the point where video games got censored. They got out to ban Halloween costumes to the point where the police would be involved in the situation. Some of the most prominent of the voices literally went to the UN advocating for the banning of internet trolls who disagree with them. They have indoctrinated students with horrendously useless gender studies program. Don't even get me started on DIGRA. Just at the time where the conspiracy has turned real, people have started to turn into Kenji and believe everything that he say. People tried to find him anywhere, but he has gone. He is nowhere to be found at a time where he has gained significance. It's too late. The feminists have taken over the world, and our prophet is long lost. Gone. People, however, found archives of one of the many conspiracies that he put in Yamako Academy, the high school that he entered. One of the conspiracies stated that the current South Korean president, Park Yun hye is being mind-controlled by a religious cult called the Eight Goddesses. One of the Eight members is revealed to be Shui shun shi a close friend of President Park. She, alongside the other Eight members, are controlling the president, manipulating the economy, maintaining national treasury, deciding every diplomatic moves from toe to toe, assigning secretaries and ministries by their own will. Now, that sounds absolutely ridiculous, right? That sounds like it came off of a deus ex ergo proxy crossover. I'm sure that it was just a horrendous fanfiction that our prophet Kenji has worked out. He has some spare time to write some crazy nonsense, but at least there are times in which he's aware that he's writing crazy nonsense. He has that line, and he would never ever cross that line. So this must have been a ridiculous fanfiction, right? This is all just fanfiction, right? President Park Geun-hye has issued a public apology and admitted her close ties with a former aide, Choi Soon Shil, who has been mired in recent corruption allegations. Oh. My. God. President Park said that Che, who has no government job, helped her on her key speeches. Oh my God. What, what the hell is going on? That, that, that can't be real, right? That can't be real, right? Kenji could have never predicted this. He he couldn't have. 지난 대선 때 주로 연설이나 홍보 등의 분야에서 저의 선거 운동이 국민들에게 어떻게 전달되는지에 대해 개인적인 의견이나 소감을 전달해 주는 역할을 하였습니다. My God, My God, President Park herself. On the apology confirmed that someone is tampering with her speeches. She claimed her to be an old friend who helped her in difficult times. Uh, we're gonna need to find out what's going on behind this. Th this can't be real, right? She can't be under the influence of cult-like mind control, right? I mean, sure, presidents are corrupt. South Korea is no stranger to governmental corruption. But it can't be because she's a brainwashed cult member, right? <laughs> I'm, I, 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 I don't, I don't even, I don't even know where to begin. This is crazy. Okay, I'm gonna try to explain what's going on. I'm gonna try to make sure that everything here is explained within context, so that you can understand the situation that has exploded to the point where I cannot even believe that such a ridiculous conspiracy can be true. It is to the point where I make an entire video about it just to tell you guys how. How freaking insane this entire thing is. Our prophet Kenji is probably out there somewhere, rolling on his grave or screaming on the top of his lungs at his spaceship. I don't know. We don't know. But God speed to him, for he truly is our Lord and Savior.
Let's get to the real story at hand. So the president of South Korea has issued a formal apology to the citizens of the country for causing distress over the relationship that she has with Shui Shun Shi. Uh, just uh, that's how Google Translate pronounces. So I'm just gonna pronounce it that way. Who is Shui Shun Shi? Well. She is a close friend of the president, and that's fine if you have close friends and everything, but she's actually more than just close friends. In order to understand the relationship, we're gonna need to dive into a time where they first met. Here's an article in Ask the Korean, which you should definitely check out for the full story and the citations. I'm gonna present the story of the article on this particular video. So, President Park Jin Hai meet Shi Shin Shi first time thanks to her connections with her father, Shi Tai Min, around the 70s. For the sake of uh, escaping mispronunciation, I'm gonna name him the Elder Shi. The Elder Shi is basically a pseudo Christian cult leader who claimed to heal people through his religious teachings or something. Now, keep that in mind because that is important. When the president's mother died, Elder Shui sent letters after letters after letters telling the president that the soul of her mother is speaking to him. Elder Shui, the religious cult leader, said that her mother didn't truly die. She just merely moved out of her way to make move to her daughter to be the president of South Korea. And the president believed him and she went to him for guidance. This is the beginning of the unholy relationship between the two. The relationship between the two is very severe. Elder Shui basically gained tons and tons more influence to the point where Parks' father personally interrogated him. The influence have gone through the president's head to the point where she is estranged by her remaining family, including her brother and sister. In 1990, the president's siblings went on so far to petition the then Korean president to remove the influence of Elder Shui from their sister. Her siblings themselves called it literal mind control. Anyway, Elder Shui died in 1994, at which point President Park has gone through the ranks of becoming a legitimately competent politician with the help of Elder Shui's daughter, Shui Shun Shi. Daughter Shui, I'm just... I hate pronunciations. Sure, there are rumors about the unhealthy relationship between the two, like, say, the 1990s petition, but President Park dismissed it as just baseless rumors without any sorts of evidence, and some of those baseless evidences are, of course, including her own brother and sister. As it turned out, Daughter Shui has about as equally powerful influence over her as Elder Shui. Tons and tons of extortions happen, both the big and the small companies. Shui also have control over the presidential power. She would receive policy briefs, and she used those policy briefs as discussions within her inner circle of friends. Some of these friends that she picked on discussing the various serious political policies that might influence both Koreas, including her own gigolo. What, what in the actual fuck? And a K-pop music video director. That 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 can't be real. That 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 can't be real. That I, I'm sorry. That, that can't be real. I really need to take a break. This amount of insanity is impossible to process, but I have to get through. So. Okay, as if that's not crazy enough, discussing governmental policies with the most untrustworthy individuals you can ever think of, and the fact that she has the ability to literally mind control the president to submit to her own will, that's not the only kind of power that she has. She would also receive ultra-confidential information detailing secret meetings between North and South Korea military authorities, receiving a $150 million budget proposal to the Ministry of Culture, Sports, and Tourism, and distributing them to her friends' projects, possibly new K-pop music videos. Then bizarrely, she also went on to claim that North Korea is gonna collapse by 2017, according to the spirits that spoke to her. I, I, well, I, 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 I need to take another break. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When a stronger spirit appears, the weaker spirit cowers. But all evil spirits cower before Jesus. <sighs> this is absurd. This is beyond compare. I, I I can't believe something like this is happening. I, I thought the mind control thing was ridiculous, but this, oh boy. Oh boy, this is another level. Just, so, 
I'm gonna just continue. So basically, President Parks' aides complained about this mysterious puppet master controlling every single thing that she does, including modifying the president's speeches. Now, these president's aides who have suspicions about this have been dismissed by President Park and replaced by those who are close to the puppet master, Daughter Shri, to the point where... Oh, oh my god. Are you prepared to listen to this? Are you prepared to listen to the most absurd thing that you'll ever hear in your entire life? Just get ready. There's a point in which President Parks' aides is the personal trainer of Daughter Shi. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I need to take another break. I'm, fuck this shit. <laughs> God, I'm sorry, I, I'm human, I can only handle so much absurdity. The, the fact that all of this is real life is... If this is a freaking fanfiction of fanfiction.net, I can truly believe that, but my god. Oh boy, this is real life. This is happening in South Korea, this completely absurd thing is happening there, just... Just a random nobody who has just possess the most powerful power in the entirety of mankind and discusses policies with the most... Uh, so, the question here is, what has brought this entire absurdity into light? So, of course, the leak happened. The major breakthrough occurred in October 24, where a cable network TV discovered a galaxy tab belonging to Shui Shun Shi in the office that she abandoned. And I agree with the article wholeheartedly that this galaxy tab is a Pandora's box. This tab basically documents everything, including presidential speeches with Choi's markups, presidential briefs for cabinet's meetings, appointment information for presidential aides, chat messages with presidential aides, the president's vacation schedule, draft designs for commemorative stamps featuring the president, President and so much more. And if you thought the discovery of this tablet isn't stupid enough, if you thought that the fact that the president of South Korea is being controlled by a random nobody, this random nobody's password is one of the strongest password in the existence of mankind. No password. And just in case Dr. Shri denied that this tablet is hers, well, <laughs> just a little bit of advice. Tablet cameras aren't generally good to take selfies. You are here. And you're an idiot. This is where the public apology began. The next day, it is discovered that she's lying through her teeth. What a surprise. So with all of this being explained to you, you might be asking, why am I covering something like this? Well, just the sheer amount of absurdity is one of those reasons. And I just also want to illustrate you guys the point that mind control is a thing. People are going to do whatever it takes as long as money and influence are going to get inside their bank accounts, and yes, creating fictional cults are one of those things. The saddest part is the people who actually buy into the premise of said cult. Just look at the amount of manipulation that Elder Shui is able to commit to the, oh, the, the freaking president. It piqued the interest of the dictator of its time, the president's dad. Daughter Shui is able to manipulate Park to extort $70 million from Korea's largest corporations and even some from small corporations. This whole cult idea is a brilliant manipulation to gain power and influence, and the one thing that they manipulated was President Parks' sorrow on the depth of her mother. Someone as brilliant as Elder Shui managed to manipulate that sorrow into something profitable. He was able to convince her that he was able to communicate and contact the spirit of her mother. Now, a rational human being would just dismiss this claim as crazy, but unfortunately she was at the state of grief, which tends to make people to take irrational behaviors. She was, or probably is still under that grief, so she stuck to the one last connection that she got, which Elder Shui claimed to be as a last-ditch effort to be with her mother. Elder Shui managed to manipulate the love to her mother, her grief of her loss, her own sadness and sorrow, and her own free will, and turned it into his own profit. I have never seen a corruption on this level of magnitude. The blog post stated that corruption in Korea is a thing, but this comes into a shock to everybody because, well, at least corruption happens within some form of basis or reason. When people become corrupt for their own benefit or their family's benefit or anyone's benefit, it is scummy. But 
at least you'll get where they're coming from. However, nobody expected the president to be corrupt just for the sake of the daughter of a cult leader who claimed to have connections to the president's dead mother. That is absurd. That is insane, but... That's just South Korea, ladies and gentlemen. That's just the amount of absurdity we can expect right now. We've entered a state where any absurd rumors or claims about the president is probably true. Maybe the president was a member of the freaking reptilians or Megalia for all I know. And if you don't know what Megalia is, it's basically South Korean feminists that attack video games. That's an entirely different crap storm. Read the article in the description. I really don't want to talk about the ferry incident, but I really have to just to show you context. It's a horrifying tragedy that you might or might not want to read depending on your state of mind. If you want to read the full story as a Korean, again, have an excellent three-parter here. The entire thing is just a major shitstorm that you need to read to believe. I'm, I'm going to cover up some of the relevant things regarding this incident and its connection to the president. Now, remember when I said that Park is a competent politician? She's competent, but... She's not moral. This is the kind of person who are willing to put undercover plane clothes inside the shelter of the victims' family group so that when they make any actions like moving into the blue house to ask the president about this after a mysterious seven-hour disappearance, tons of policemen are already waiting for them thanks to the plane clothes giving them the freaking hints. The government also told all bus companies so that the victims' families are unable to go to Seoul. The families then began walking to Seoul in the middle of the night, trying to cover 200 miles on foot. Almost a thousand policemen stopped them at the bridge connected to Jindo Island in the mainland. Even after all of that, they're still under constant surveillance by undercover plane clothes. That's right, the victims' families of a, one of the worst tragedies in the entire history of Korea are under surveillance. <laughs> Why? Just... Oh, uh, just... Now, there are some absolutely insane conspiracies that come within this. For example, some say that the entire incident is basically a ritualistic sacrifice for the cult, as in the same cult that Elder Shui is a part of. Sounds goddamn ridiculous, but some revelations have emerged to the point where this is probably possible. This article from the New York Times do some investigations on the owner of the ferry company Yu Byung In, who turns out to be a member of the Evangelical Baptist Church of Korea. He has spent four years in prison for defrauding his church members, all of that for money, isn't it? And he was also investigated for a possible connection of 32 church members who were found dead, bound or hanged to the ceiling of a factory restaurant in 1987. This, combined with the president's desperate attempts on silencing everybody, her rather mysterious seven-hour disappearance after this massive tragedy, the captain of the crew who is cartoonishly incompetent uh, I'm dead serious, read this The crew members who survived in a suspiciously disproportionate rate to the point where investigations are made and the captain is charged with murder all might make the, the entire thing about cult sacrifice true After all, she's being mind controlled by a matriarch a daughter of someone who claimed to have connections to her dead mother Every ridiculous rumor that flies over people's heads are now true thanks to this huge revelation President Park is in one stage of grief that is stretched for far too long all thanks to this matriarchal nobody who elected her own gigolo as a political advisor uh, I, I'm genuinely concerned about the future of South Korea right now. The president refused to resign or even cut connections to this master manipulator. She's still deep on that grief for far too long, to the point where it is seriously damaging. To South Koreans out there, good freaking luck on advancing life. And to our prophet, lord and savior Kenji, God bless him wherever he is. That's all for the video today. If you liked this, you can go ahead and click like button and subscribe for more. If you wish, you can support me on Patreon, and thanks for watching.